Uh, what would you like for Christmas, Keith? Apart from an amateur system that works. Uh, Rovers to finish in the top eight. Rovers to finish in the top eight. <laughs> Do we think that's going to happen? I like that. I like that. That's good. good Very shot. ambitious. Ambit- ambitious fruit, says David. Ambitious. <laughs> to the Dockhouse Rugby Show Christmas special, the end of year show show. Something like that. Anyway, uh, joining us today, my trusted host, Mr. David Pye. We've also got uh, Keith Pollard, the former Hull KR Maitland Australia Rugby League player. Louis McCarthy Scarsbrook, who needs no mention at all. And Mr. Joe Batchelor. <laughs> How are we, everybody? All right. All right. Sounds very good. Thanks, Keith. You're looking very smart. Have you... Uh... Is that on purpose, or have you it's too tight to put the heating on, so you put an extra layer on? No, no, no. Cost cost of eating's gone up, mate. I'm toasty in this. Absolutely <laughs> toasty. So, <laughs> uh, Louis, I don't know if you've met Keith. Um, oh, all right, Lou. No, hello, Keith. Lovely to meet you, bruv. Same, same here, pal. Seen so, you a few times. You know, yeah. I look proper or loose for it. What is your position? Uh, look, uh, left left back in a change room. If they could leave me, I think. <laughs> 18th man next year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here he is, water boy. <laughs> yeah, so Keith played for Hull KR back it back it day, uh, and then he went over to Australia. Played a real for, game. Played for Maitland. <laughs> he's been he's been sent off on more more stadiums than we can name. To be fair, and it was uh, difficult to be sent off back then, not like now. <laughs> well, if you so, didn't get sent off once a year, you weren't doing your job. Yes, I mean, yes, man, yes. manslaughter on the pitch was only a yellow card. That's yeah. how hard it was to get sent off back then. <laughs> but uh, women, if you ever played at Featherstone, there used to be two old women that used to sit near the dugout and used to trip you up with an umbrella as you ran out. <laughs> what right. your legs? Place yeah. Oh, what a place to play Featherstone in them days, yeah. I remember, getting, I remember getting beaten up by a fellow with a walking stick at St Pat's. He was on touchline. I took a crack. Play, on you know, just... I, remember I, went, we... I, was, I went down, I took a crack. I ended up breaking my jaw, my, cracked my cheekbone. But I'm, I'm on the floor and there's a fella with a stick whacking me. When I started, at, when I started with a youth club, we were kind of youth club. We played Cast Juniors in the Yorkshire Cup in the semi-final. And Lock, Brian Lockwood was playing, Roger Millwood was playing. The, quite a few that, 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 that made the game, you know, made the grade, should I say. Anyway, lucky, I, I say lucky quite like quite a lot. And I used to be good friends with Roger before he died. Bless him. We used to talk about this game that we in it when we beat him. And lucky said, he said, who oh, was that woman? He said, well, our winger, Jack Austin. I remember him. He went to play for Bramley. Stocky kid. He was more like a prop than a winger. Jack was going down the touchline. This one pushed the pram out in front of him. <laughs> He went out of his tits over the pram. Really, yeah. <laughs> Women and children first. Um, well, as it's the end of the end of year show show, um, we're just going to talk about really about the season, um, some of the highlights, some of the some of the best moments. What you think? Okay, <laughs> yeah. so coming to Joe first. Yeah, great. Job. And uh, I think I know what the answer to this one probably is, Joe. But go on. What was your highlight for the season? My highlight. Uh... Well, obviously, winning the grand final would be my highlight. But I think if we're looking further afield, probably the Challenge Cup final being played at Spurs. I know we we, we weren't involved in it, but I think Spurs as a venue is probably going to be the place to go in the next couple of years. And there's 60,000 people there or there, thereabouts. It was a good, good day for it in the middle of May. So I think that was a bit of an highlight. And then obviously the World Cup at the end of the year and all, all three alongside each other, all four, sorry, should I say, alongside each other, probably real good for the game and probably promoted as real well, especially the wheelchair winning it. So, um, yeah, that, that's probably going to be my highlight at the end of it, wheelchair winning the World Cup. Yeah, absolute shout. What a what a competition that was, the wheelchair game. Ferocious and competitive, skillful, you know, everything. I, I absolutely loved watching that. Um, Dave, you went to Spurs, you went to the to the ground. What was your experience like? Absolutely. Spurs, from a spectator it. point of view. Fantastic. Yeah, it was brilliant. It was uh, <clears throat> just a different experience. Been to Wembley and Old Trafford and some of the other grounds, but it's quite a new ground, Tottenham, and wasn't sure what to expect. I'd heard quite a lot about it. So walking up to it, really great atmosphere on the way up there. 
and we uh, we had some fantastic seats just behind the dugout. So we pretty much as the players were walking out, we were pretty much stood right there, right behind Ian Watson. Uh, so we could see that unfold. He was up and about and uh, getting involved in the game almost on a touch time. But yeah, it was fantastic. The atmosphere for us as fans seemed great. So I'm glad to hear it was uh, your experience as well, actually being there and playing was equally as good. So yeah, it's uh, be nice to go back, definitely. Did you go, Keith? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I don't. I don't pay. I don't pay to go to one drink again. No. It wasn't I'm a certain class out of Rovers. No. Pro- proper Yorkshire, but I'm not. I don't like pay. sitting down. To be honest with you, I mean at Rovers, I stand in the well. No, I don't. I, I, no. I mean, I went to, I went to Millennium Weekend a couple of times, and I went to Grand the, the final when it was at what was it? Cardiff. No. Rugby Union, the Twickenham, Twickenham, I up in the God St. Helens, beat Huddersfield that day. And it, we sat in, and we, like we're Wednesday, aren't we? And everybody keeps standing up in front of you. So, the time they sat down, you've missed it. You finished up arguing with somebody, don't you? They sit down and sort of crack you. And uh, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, I just won't go and sit down three times. I've finished up fighting. But yeah, they put standing up in front of me. It's like, do you know what? I, I, I refuse to sit down at rugby matches. Right. right. You, 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 talking to you is like going to game with me, Dad. <laughs> are, you three, are you three also <clears throat> with this is online and not in person in case we upset Keith? <laughs> I'm made up. Well, I'm not near him. Nearly caught in Elba then. That was, and, and, and as I say, the talk was you know, it's, it's deadly. Really is they hate one another. And I used to be an old supporter, but I got over it. <laughs> you got over <clears throat> you got bullied into it by your missus. Don't lie, Keith. I know what happened. Oh, well, yes. No, no, no. I, I got more money off Rovers. That was the end of it. You know, I've always been a mercenary. And my <laughs> highlight of L- the season. Lower the mountain. Low my the highlight mountain. of the season was when oh, Ol- when Rovers beat all oh, the last game of the season with 16 men. And after, and, and about eight of them was young kids. We beat them 36, what was it, 36 4 or something? Um, that was my highlight of the season. And Betty passed to the other prop, and the other prop scored. And oh my, that, that was like music to my, my heart. My heart I nearly cried, I mean, with the joy of it. What, what was more important than Keith in your day, that a prop who could pass or a prop who could punch? You had a bit of each. A bit of all. <laughs> but uh, off so anyway, and then... I mean, no disrespect. <laughs> Honestly, I've said it before. And, and this, I think Louis is a great player. And that's, I'm not, not pissing in your pocket, Louis. I think you are, because yeah, you can pass a ball, right? There aren't many props that can pass, or allowed to, right? That's, that's what gets to me. I mean, it, you know, let's go back years and years and years ago, back in the day, when they had props like Brian McTeague and blokes like that. John Tembe at St. Helens. It was a mountain of a man. I mean, he tried to... He used to run like that. He was about six foot three, I think. He was a big, early, massive fella. And he couldn't go after him because he'd just give you that. So if you went low for him, he just passed it. Well, I don't mind props who, can, uh, who can't pass as long as they can run straight and hard, Keith. And uh, if you've got a problem with that, see Santa, not me. No, <laughs> you've got to be able to pass the ball. I, I agree. It's a, it's, it's a ball playing sport. You look when you look at the scoreboard, right? You don't get you don't get how many you play. Yeah, how can you say it's Wait a minute, shut sport. up. There's no to say how many how many tackles you've done, how many yards <laughs> you've made. It's points, tries, and goals. That's what you get for winning games. So don't yeah. give me any shit about um, game plans and structures and all this rubbish that will come out when out. You run, <laughs> you pass, you back up, and you tackle. That's all you've got to do. I, I think I think Keith, Keith should coach England and get out of it. I'm I'm on I'm on that camp. I've got to say, I am. He'd uh, pick you, Joe, if uh, Keith had the coach. You'd have been in. Oh, Joe, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Louis. By the sounds of it, you'd have been yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you got I, mean, I said the other day, didn't I, about second rows? About you did. Four. You got you got to mention in dispatches, Joe Bachelor, off off Keith. Yeah, it's you're in. You're in the show. Yeah, he, he said he he praised your uh, running style and the way you play and approach the game, like a dying. Is I, what I said was <laughs> that play, players now you've got six tackles, aren't you? 
Most, most, they all do the same play. You could take a bloke to watch a game who's never seen the game before, then take him away, burn his eyes out, and he could go the next week and he'd know what's going on because everybody plays the same way. Four or five drives and a kick. Very rarely you see one forward pass to another forward. Very rarely you see anybody run for a gap. You know, they all run, they just run straight at the thing. You have to put a line down the middle of the shirt, so give them something to run at. Uh, it's, it's honestly to me the, the modern game is is shite. It really is. Don't argue. Don't argue with him. You two. Don't argue sorry, with sorry, him. Sorry, oh. Trying his best, man. The fitter, the faster. You eating all the right foods and, and bright diets. No, right he's not okay. Like that. But half of them can't play the game. Not the game that we know. It's a. I know it's a totally different game. But I still say that the old, when blokes was, Van Vollenhoven scored 80 tries in a season. I'm not, it wasn't that the others was that bad, it was the way they played, to throw the ball about. Yeah. Okay, then. Will, okay, times, okay then. So, so, so in, in defence of that, obviously you two know the modern game. You're aware of Keith's era and how the ball was played. Do you feel that the game is fitter, faster? And a better game now than it was back then. Well, Keith just twatted everyone he spoke to about, so I can't argue. With him, can I? No, he can't argue with him. No. He, 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 made, he made Adrian Marley look like Cinderella. Exactly. Fuck me. It's fucking lay me with fucking Liverpool. <laughs> That's it. Good night. No, obviously. It was, just, it was just the way it was. I mean, I, I, I don't want to start. I'm, I, I, once you get me going, I'll never shut up. But it's, to me, it was just. We was was brought up to let the ball do the work, you know. Why why run through a brick wall when there's a door there? That's my logic, yeah. you know. If you if you run for a gap, a bloke would come for you, and you can put a bloke through the gap that he's left. I mean, they're all like this now, aren't they? All this mudding in, and you know, you get in there twenty five, or you know, spread out on your own twenty five. You, you you close them in. Nobody you, thinks of passing the ball on the outside of them, do they? Did you there's prefer much pr- pr- work? Uh, defensive lines now that you know the defense is so narrow, but when, they're so quick when the ball goes, they can follow the ball. Years ago, they, they weren't quick enough to be able to follow the ball. One of the defense. worst things they've done to me is made it 10 yards, you know, 10 yards in defense. Yeah, like when, when we played, there was only five yards away, so you had to stand deeper, run onto it, and when you're running onto it, you can pick a gap. When you most blokes now, you know, you know yourself. You just you, the play of the ball is nearly flat line, isn't it? They, took, they call it. They changed the rule, didn't they? The ball shall be passed. Shall be passed. Shall not be passed in the direction of the opposition trial line. Before the ball has to be passed in the direction of your trial line, right? Well, goal line as I call it. So you, they stood deeper and, and and he ran onto the ball. Now everybody seems to play flat line rugby now. The flat they, attack, yeah. Eh? Deep lines, a flat attack. Yeah. And before I forget, Joe, how's your missus? Is she all right? Don't know. She's probably downstairs with a load of towels around her. <laughs> <laughs> Should I go and get my scuba gear? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. she's is she still healthy and happy though? Is she just waiting? Is that- yeah, I'm just waiting game yeah, now. Uh been eating hot food and drinking raspberry tea for the last week and what have you. But yeah. Just- well, a few more days, you could have a Christmas baby. Yeah, I know. Well, um, I hope she's. Uh, I hope everything goes well, mate, and uh, she, everyone's happy and healthy. So good luck with that. Cheers, thank you. We're gonna get. We're gonna get Louis' moment of the season. Are no, we just gonna? Yeah, yeah. That That's what we've just come into that. Same as Joe's. Same as Joe's. Where's the Joe's? Joe's. Same as Joe's. The highlight of the season is Keith's fucking stories at the moment. I'm loving them. Just might, might as well do a podcast with Keith. We have done last week. Yeah, it's yeah, out it's now. It. Obviously, you've not watched it, Louis. Thanks for that. It's <laughs> <laughs> on the list. It's on the list. It's on the list. It's on, <laughs> so on the list. Yeah, yeah. Right. I'll tell you what. Then we'll do. We're gonna go. We're gonna go into my quiz. Should you have a quiz? No, you love it. Oh, you know, do. Your quiz. you know, I love your quiz. The league was played before 1983. <laughs> Before you start asking questions. <laughs> yes, I know. Don't worry. It's all right. It's not all about rugby league. It's about, oh, right. It's about uh, Louis' favourite topic, music. It's not really. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. You're not right. I have done sports. Into music. Oh, me? Yeah. No. We used, no, we used, we used to do, we used to do a quiz 
Oh, during grime. lockdown. I know grime, I know grime. like staffers, but no, no nothing But it's still Yeah. But it's still it? Can't beat it. Right, here we go. First question. Which club was formed first? Hull KR or Hull? And bonus points if you can give me the years in which they were formed. Are we writing the answers down? Uh, but we can, has everybody got something to write on? That's Or you can type your, your answer in the uh, thing if you want. Or if you're on your phone, that's going to be difficult. So, you, Louis, you can go last and just shout out. Yes, that's right. Just copy okay. everyone else's. The Rovers, yeah. Rovers, yeah. Rovers, Rovers, Rovers was the original West Old team. And Hull was the original East Old team. Right. And Rovers was at Boulevard. My answer's in. Oh, right. Yeah. Good one, Dev. Go on, Keith. I'm just trying to think of the date. I'm on the Heritage Group and I can't think of the date. 1878. Eh? Right, right, right. right. No. That's your answer, Joe. I'll tell you in a minute, hang on. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 go- no, no Googling. So 1878 from Joe. I've got Dave's answer. What what do you say? 1864. 1864. Okay, Louis. I'm gonna hold KR and 1872. 72. Right, and Pyle said uh 18. Rubber League didn't start till 1873, did it? <laughs> Well, I know it played. I know it played. I know it was played in nineteen sixty-two. Okay. <laughs> I see. I see what you're doing there. I see what you're doing there, Joe Batchelor. <clears throat> right. So the answer is Hull KR were formed first. They were formed in 1882, <sighs> and Hull was formed in 1865. Okay. Um, so who was formed first? And bonus for so who won that round? Anybody? Nobody. 1864. Mm, no, nobody. 1868. Keith, <laughs> no. Give it Keith. I'll give it your better, I don't know. <laughs> Keith's one up. Don't, don't, don't have pity on the aging. And you're <laughs> going to be in trouble now, Keith, for the head. You can help for being a pensioner. So wrong. Match and LMS, and then you make it down at the Heritage Society. They might be right. in the you're getting it wrong. Okay, I was looking for not knowing that one. Go on. no, 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 nobody scored there. No. Okay, so you let's call that again and pretend you're asking it for the first time. So keep yeah. it right. Yeah, we, we should do, shouldn't we? Uh, okay, which football club was formed first? Millwall, Huddersfield Town, or St. Helens Town? Oh, yeah, I know this one. Fuck you. I don't know. I've got Alas and the guests and Ellen's because it's such an oddball, isn't it? That one. Right. It's because we, we make fucking plays from the owned them. Yeah. yeah no, a, a friend of ours owns St. Alan's Town Football Club. That's why I threw that one in. Uh, all right, Dave's answer's in. We'll answer that. That's the same as last time. <laughs> You know what? Yeah, you just yeah, copy and paste it, Dave. I'm going to do the same as well, but change the name. St. Ellen's Town, 1872. Is <laughs> mine. You know what's embarrassing, though? I spoke to Keith earlier and give me the answers. I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> Still got them wrong. <laughs> so come on. Um, I didn't even know the other football team. Which, 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 which is the oldest town? Which is the oldest team? Millwall, Huddersfield Town, or St. Ellen's Town? St. Ellen. St. Ellen's. St. Ellen's. Ellen's. St. Ellen's. Okay. The oldest team is Millwall, formed oh. in 1885. Oh, come on. Huddersfield really? Town was formed in 1908, and St. Ellen's Town was formed in 1901. So St. Ellen's Town is the second oldest of those three clubs. You should really know that because there's so many badges in my shirts on so my Millwall shirts. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, oh, no, St. Helens Town, that's 1901. No, the Millwall one. <laughs> oh, the Millwall, yeah, yeah. He's not going to have a set of shirts, is he? I not going to say. Is that next season you're on about? <laughs> yeah, season, yeah. Right, okay, so, no, no points there. Oh, well done. 
Great quiz. Quiz is yeah, good, isn't it? <laughs> okay, what year was St. Helens formed? Oh, that's on your shirt. 150 years ago. 150, yeah, 150 years ago, yeah. 1873. 1873 from Joe. Any advances, Louis? No, same, same as. We're talking about the Northern Union team or a rugby league team? St. Helens Rugby League Football Club. Well, just St. Helens Rugby Club originally, yeah. yeah. When they were, yeah. Not when they were Pilks. I won't have a clue. Fair enough. Two Off bleeding, two, in my opinion, two bleeding early, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, any advice? So Dave's answers in. Same as last time. Copy and paste it again. Uh, the answer was 1873. Joe Bachelor is correct. Bang on the nose. Well done, Joe. Well done. Did you know that? Did you know that when he was at York? No. <laughs> no. He just thought he that was St. Helens. First year, he thought that was the number he was playing. <laughs> okay. Who is the highest goal scorer of all time for Millwall? What the hell's Millwall going to do with Rum? Just Matt, Lou, Lou is a Millwall fan. Are you a Millwall fan, Lou? Yes, yes. Neil Harris. Uber Neil Harris, yeah. Good boy. Well done. Tim Carhill from Dave. Neil Harris, for both of you, is, is correct. Do you know how many goals he scored? 100 Twelve. and... 17. 117. Okay, that's... Go on, Joe. How many? Seventy-four. It's seventy-four. Goals, <laughs> Dave. Goals, Dave. Twelve. Twelve. <laughs> uh, do you want to guess how many goals he scored, Key? No. He's there. I'm on, I'm on, yeah. No. He scored one hundred and thirty-eight. Yeah. So I'm going to give LMS. Did Stepney? Did Alex Stepney play for them? Point there. I'm going to have to throw that one over to Joe, uh, to uh, Louis. Louis did. Oh, sorry. Alex Stepney, did he play for Millwall? Oh, I don't know. 1874, he probably did, yeah. No, oh, in the six, in the when he, he went to Manchester United, didn't he? And, he? and I'm sure he played for Millwall before before he went there, because I used to go and watch Old City play in the 60s. And um, City had a decent time, a decent side. And, and Millwall was another one of the top teams in the, in the Championship, I think. Oh, the, the second division or first division or whatever it was. But Millwall was a real good side in them days and City were. And I remember going to watch them play and I'm sure that step they played in the goal for them. Around about 60, 64 time. Uh, if, he, if he left us and went United, he probably burnt everything with his, so yeah, probably not. I'm sure he went to Manchester United. A real good goalkeeper he was. You, Santa, have you fell asleep? No, 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 no. I was looking for one for you. I was, looking at, plaza, what? I, was, I, was, I was adding one in for you. Right, your, your next question. I, was, I saw all these kids mad at me telling me what they want for Christmas. Um, who was the highest goal scorer of all time for Huddersfield Town? Oh. Uh, I don't know. They're fucking useless. I know. <laughs> I'm not sure I even know a Huddersfield Town player. Uh, do you know what? I, was I think I know thinking... one fan. Andy Booth. Andy Booth. Andy Booth? Oh, yeah. Um, no. No. <laughs> no is the answer. Uh, it was George Brown. I was going to say that, Brownie boy. Yeah. Brownie boy, yep. Do you know how many goals no, no. he scored? Did he score more or less than Neil nice. Harris? Less. Less. More. More. The same. More. Same and more. Okay, so that's a point for Dave and a point for Batch. He scored. Uh, uh, 140. How many? 142. 159. <sighs> what a player. Kill it. What a player. I didn't even know him. What a player. New Mill Wars, but he didn't know yours. <laughs> I know. Yeah, what's that all about? Because he's listened to you that much, that's what it is. Yeah. You've influenced him. You like his soup. That's fine. Because I didn't know any Huddersfield Town players, I thought it might be a trick question. It's someone with the surname Bachelor. So in my haste to type that out quickly, 
I've spelt it wrong, and it's come out Bath Cellar. Bachelor, I guess. Steve, Steve Bath Cellar. <laughs> In fact, I'm going to change. Hang on. Wait, 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 one change your name. I'm going to change your name to Bath Cellar. Bath Cellar. <laughs> uh, rename. <laughs> Bath Cellar. There we go. <laughs> right. Um, who was St. Helens's? Record all-time point scorer. And how many points? Is it a kicker? It's a lengthy lean. It's clean, Ooh. falling over. Good shout, good shout. But it's not right. Yeah. Kel Coslett. Kel Coslett. Any advance on Kel Coslett, Joe Bachelor? Von Van Bollhoven. Von Van Bollhoven. He'll, ca- he'll be the ice try scorer. But that's all he did do. <laughs> no, no, that's disrespectful. Um, <laughs> but he was, he was a fantastic winger, wasn't he? But, um, he wasn't a goal kicker, so I can't see him being the highest point scorer. I'm just going to go over someone a bit more recent because he scored tries and kicked goals, sometimes with the mascot's head on, Sean Long. Oh, good show, Dave. Good show. It's, it's not right, though. Uh, Louis was right. Oh, Kill Cosley. building up to the answer, and it was still wrong. <laughs> Kel, Kel Coslett was the right answer. Oh, I um, thought you meant Super League. No, I didn't say Super League. I said all time. Oh, yeah. Do we get Closing the point? question. Closing the question. Do you know how many points he scored? Any guesses? Lots. Correct. Half a point for lots. <laughs> um, 3,000 something. 3,000 something. Any advance on 3,000 something? Five and a half thousand. Five and a half thousand. Five and a half thousand on the left from Five hundred of them were drop kicks, I reckon. Going once. <laughs> how, how many points do you reckon, Keith? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just trying to... Neil Fox is the rec- world record point scorer, wasn't he? <coughs> of all time? Um, yeah, I think, yeah. I mean, the the, the Featherston player. Wakefield. 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 Centre. Neil Fox. Neil Fox, yeah. The brother Neil of the Fox. bloke that missed the goal at Wembley. Yeah, that was Denick oh. Fox. That's Don. Don, Don Fox. Don there were three brothers, weren't there? Don. The 80s. Peter played for, Peter played for Batley, Featherston, Rovers. He used to be an after-dinner speaker, did Peter. Yeah. And um, everybody he used, he used to say... Me bro- in his Yorkshire accent, me, you know, the roller R's and that. He said, my brother was a world record point scorer. The finest prince of centres he was, wasn't he? He was a great player. He said, Don, what was he famous for? Missing a goal at Wembley. What the people think, oh, people always think I am. Don. <laughs> <laughs> he said, nobody ever mistakes me for our name. <laughs> I would have said, I would have said about three and a half thousand. Oh, and you said how many, Louis? 3,000? 3,000 or something, yeah. Oh, what's going on? You went, oh, 3,500. <laughs> right. I'll give you both a point. 3,413. Well done. Oh, That's yeah, a lot of points. Point, point, Jesus Christ. You've yeah, never saw Louis Fox play then? Only, no, not live. I was, I was too young. You would have heard of him back, wouldn't you? Yeah, Neil yeah. Fox. Great for it. and a gentleman as well, he's a fantastic player. Watch, I've watched the watch, watch final where he misses that kick as well. Highly from the game, one minute gone if he the goal. Some of the league players won't dare look. It's not a hard shot, but it is. It's always a hard shot when the match depends on it, and in this weather, it's taking all the time in the world. Because he's allowed to kick it, he can't blow time until it's kicked. It's all on the go. What a grandstand finish, is it? He missed it! He missed it! It's on the ground, he missed it! Well, and there goes the whistle for Tom. Please, brother. Tom, yeah. It broke him, you know, it really... It, it, yeah. It's never the same fella. My granddad said that. Yeah, never the same fella after that. Shame, innit? That one moment can define your whole... And he went the next day. Career and life. And went the next day and kicked, kicked the same goal with, in his slippers. <laughs> just to prove that he could. Yeah. Just for his own... Sanity. But he, Neil said to me one time, I knew Neil pretty well, you know, played in that area, like, and uh, he was talking about some after 
because we, we used to go there, Rovers ex players always take a trip there every year. Uh, and uh, I was talking to him one time, and he, he was on about Donny, he said he was never the same after he missed that goal. Really, really got to him. Shame. Paul Lamb. Poor Paul Lamb. Yeah, as Eddie would have said. Uh, up and under. Uh, right, next question. What is Bakashi? <laughs> Bukashi. Yeah, but Buzzkashi. Buzzkashi. B-U-Z-K-A-S-H-I. It's not what you think, Joe. It's Louise Google search history, isn't it? <laughs> Bukashi. <laughs> Bukashi. Uh, is it a motorbike? <laughs> Fuck's sake. Is it a motorbike? No. <laughs> no. It's some sort of martial art. It's not. No, it is a sport. It's not a martial art, though. A 500cc Bugatti. 500cc <laughs> Bugatti. Buzzcashy. Buzzcashy. <coughs> Any advances? Joe, Joe Bachelor, coming to you. Reindeer racing. Reindeer racing. Reindeer, reindeer racing. Where have we pulled that one from, That's Mr. A, Google? I, I think, I think good... it's a machine for making rugby balls. No, it's a sport, David. Is it? Oh. Right. Well, that's a... Yeah, yeah, it is a sporting sport, question, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, well, right, any no. sport. Oh, is that the one um, that's played in Asia where they... It looks like a game of tick. Is it that one? No, that's... Ah, that's that's uh, Bagadi. Bagadi. Is that game that they used to play in Russia where they used to cut blokes' heads off and you used to use it like <laughs> polo? <laughs> no. um, close. Post. Is it something okay. like they do on Harry Potter? On was he no, now? It's, is it that? No, no, it's not. It's not on Louis search engine. It's not choppy heads off, and it's not what you just said, Dave. It is. It, its actual title, if you were to translate it, is goat dragging, and it's horse mounted players attempt to place a goat oh, or car oh. carcass. In I a goal. Far off, was he wasn't, no, no, he wasn't far off. No, 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 there was reindeer racing. That wasn't far off, but it wasn't right. That's all I'm saying, Keith. Please don't. He's harsh, isn't he? He's harsh, is Santa. <laughs> Worst Santa ever, Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's what? <laughs> Worst Santa Some of these kids ask for a toy and they spell it wrong. He's not going to take it to them. That's it. No, no number goat spleen. Goat spleen. Here's a goat spleen. <laughs> Here's a goat spleen. Have that. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Next question. How many people are in a Botoshi team? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you don't know what Botoshi is, okay, think Jenga, capture the flag and Battle Royale. It's kind of a mixture of all three of them. Battle Royale, catching a flag and Jenga. Mm. Whatever it is, it mean? one less if it keeps playing. Six. One less of keys playing. He'll, he'll, Six. He'll, 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 Six. Six is the answer from Keith. Anybody else? 17. 17. 17. 17. 11. 11. Three. Definitely Three. 11. I'm going to give the I'm going to give the point to Louis because he was closest. Um, but it's actually 75 on each side. 75. There you go. Yeah, yeah. It's played played in like China and Asia and all them. Uh, Bo Botoshi, it's called. Do you know um, what, Santa? If it was 75 aside, I bet me and you still wouldn't get a game. Yeah. <laughs> you last picked. I know. <laughs> Mind you, there won't be 75 at all the team if Keith was played. He'd have half, oh. <laughs> half of them off. He'd have knuckled them all. Right. <clears throat> what honour was given to the winning captain of a Pocketok team? Pocketok honor. being the Aztec sport in the Mayan times. A wife. A wife. Good show. Oh, good yeah. Show. That's, any advances? He's good at this, Louis. I'm going to say a hmm. gold goblet. A gold goblet? With, oh, with, yeah. Yeah, something like uh, they used to have things like uh, sheep's blood in it or something like that, or sheep's right. heart right. in a goblet, because that would give you power. That's yes. what I think it probably I like is. that. I like that answer, Dave. I like that. Yeah. It's not right, right? But it's good. No. Love the, it's not the imagination. It should, have been, it should have been the sheep's heart and the gold goblets. Yeah. Whatever yeah. answer you're going to come up with is going to be rubbish compared to mine. <laughs> Probably is. Joe Bachelor. Uh, a, a sheep or a cow or something like that. A sheep or a cow. 
Uh, the answer is you were beheaded and sacrificed to the gods as a yeah. as a trophy. Hmm. Well, Congratulations! Well, I mean, uh, well, again, I'm imagine, like, uh, imagine though you're in the dressing rooms and your coach comes in and goes, "Right, good news, you're captain." I'm today. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be hamstring. <laughs> Keith had just get sent off for ten minutes ago. He'd be all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like to make sure he could get mad on the match. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well. And what is the oldest sport in the world? Tiddlywinks. Tiddlywinks. Oh, good show. That's still played today. It is still a sport today, yes. Yeah. Chess. Chess. Ooh, good answer. Good one, Keith. Good one. Good Horse racing. Horse racing. Good answer. Sport of kings. I'm going to go camel racing. Camel racing. Good shout, Dave. You're all wrong. <laughs> Wrestling. Yes. Wrestling, obviously, WWE <laughs> was back. Actually, they were John Cena back in the day. There were there were there were pit, there were cave paintings found in La Sorte, oh, John in Cena, France, <laughs> of John Cena and Rey Mysterio, <laughs> uh, and they date back fifteen thousand three hundred years ago. But here's a question for you while we're on it, then, Louis. What would your wrestling name be? Oh, Cockney. <laughs> nice. That's what everybody calls you, isn't it? <laughs> I'm on the stands, they don't. <laughs> they do it, they do it, Craven Park. They do it, do it Craven Park. You, you, Kate. Bachelor, what would your name be? Uh, wrecking Ball. Single. Wrecking Ball. <laughs> <laughs> what, what would your special move be, Wrecking Ball? Or just cannonball someone at knees. Cannonballing with the knees. Nice, nice, nice. Dave, what would you be? I'd be the Pied Piper. Oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> you've been Pied. You've had that Piper. one for years. You have, you've yeah. thought of that, haven't you? You've, yeah. you've, 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 you've brought them yeah. aside. I've, I've had that written down for about 27 years. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for that moment. <laughs> like that. <laughs> I finally got it in. Go, go get the outfit out there. Go get the yes, outfit. Yeah. There's the Pied Piper. Ronnie Piper's evil brother, the Pied <laughs> Piper coming out. Yeah. Rat would like, Rowdy. yeah. Rat Rowdy. Nickname Rowdy. What about you, Keith? If he was a wrestler, what would you be called? I think I always, I talked, the bloke I talked about who played for Curry Curry, Mad Dog Mitchell. Mad Dog Mitchell. That's a good name, though. Good name, Mad Dog, wasn't it? Mad Dog Mitchell, yeah. I like it, Mad Dog. I do, I do like that one. It's okay. super key. There was another one played at Newcastle Knights called Mad Dog. It was a, oh, oh, yeah, we got to be a Mad Dog. He was a back. He was a centre or a winger. So his nickname was Mad Dog. He was a good player. Played for oh. Newcastle Knights when they first started off. I'm, I'm going to give Dave two points for having Pied Piper. That's how it goes. The only points I've got this whole quiz. No, you've got you've got three now, Dave. You was on. Oh, that's good. Okay, I'm, next right, I'm writing that man down. The points I've got. Look. Oh, right, so I like it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how many do you think you? How, how many do you think you've got, Keith? Minus three. <laughs> That'll do. So, okay. What would your nickname be? Mine. Hmm? Father Christmas. Hot Lips Highland. Hot Lips Highland. Hot Lips. Oh, you might have felt the wrong type of person with that, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> or did you say wrestling name? Wrestling Sorry. name, yeah. Not your online persona we're after. It's your wrestling name. The, the Highlander. <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, I mean move would be the Highland fling. Like it. <laughs> I'd throw like over it. my shoulder. Give yourself a couple of points. Thanks. Thanks, yeah. Santa. Points. I've got, I've got one. Right, next round. What are the ingredients for a baby Guinness? Oh, it's uh, we've all ordered cream. one. It's really nice as well. What did you say then, uh, Louis? Cream and black Bailey's Russian drink. Yeah. Right, <laughs> Louis, I'm going, give, I'm going to give you half a point. It's a, it's a, oh, what is it? It's like a coffee flavored. Is it absinthe? Is that? Am I thinking the right thing? It's Bailey's. Or is that no, no, a... Go on, Batch, Bailey's. And I can't remember what else has got in it. Some liqueur. No, go on, off, yeah. yeah. Give, you, give you half a point. Tea Maria. 
Tia Maria. Tia Maria. I'll go for that as well. Some liqueur. <laughs> Tia Maria. That's a coffee liqueur. Yeah, yeah, coffee liqueur. Yeah, I'll give you that. So Irish cream, coffee liqueur. One more ingredient. Whiskey. You was actually very close, Louis, which is why I gave you half a point. So the actual answer is Irish cream, coffee liqueur and black Zambuca. Black Zambuca, yeah. So I'm going to give you all half a point. Because you all got no between you. There you go. Thanks, Hot Lips. <laughs> <laughs> what ingredients are in a porn star martini? Martini? No. Martini Gin. is the drink. It's made of. Gin. Go on. Pomegranate juice. Go on. And ice. <laughs> right. Remind me not all the way, but you're A little else. bit of lemonade. A little bit of lemonade. <laughs> a little bit of lemonade. <laughs> little splash. Yeah. Pineapple juice. Pineapple juice. Oh. Go on. Vodka. Vodka. <clears throat> Bacardi. Bacardi. Go on. Rum. What? <laughs> <laughs> you know. I just know them all. I'm going to make the point of something. Come on yours for a drink at Christmas. <laughs> Uh, any advances, Keith? Nah. Nah. I'll go white rum. Yeah. Orange juice. Yeah. Uh, ice. As yeah. <laughs> and a touch of a drop of whiskey. Drop of whiskey. That's it. That's it. Vodka. Champagne. And... Orange juice. Right. Oh, no. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give I'm gonna give it give Keith the point because he was the closest all round. It's vanilla vodka, but vodka will do. Passion fruit liqueur, lime juice, prosecco, champagne, prosecco, it's the same in it. Uh with, with sugar syrup. That is the porn star okay. martini. Okay. We would much of a porn star if you had a few of them, would you? No. Especially <laughs> <laughs> off, off batches measures. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right, what is Scouse? Like not, the lang- not the language. It's stew. It's an Irish stew. Stew, yeah. stew. Pop, pop. <laughs> no, pop without a lid on. It's a stew. Oh, yeah, it is a stew. I'll give you all a point for that. Um, how long... Does it take to make a soft boiled egg? Well, well, it's just like you know nice I Google this. Sticky. Oh, did you? I Google this the other day. Six minutes. Yeah, six. 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 Four. Four. Yeah, Dip. four minutes. Four. If you yeah. want dippy, four minutes. <laughs> if you want dippy, <laughs> four minutes. <laughs> a medium to well done boiled egg would be eight to ten minutes. If you want it super well done, it's 10 minutes plus. Where have you Googled Good. this, Dave? The range you're looking for, Keith, is four minutes. My answer I have here is actually five to seven minutes. So Batch and Louis were right. This Probably. is a disgrace. Five to seven. For, for a, a nice... you got to show me the answer, Dave. Dave, you've got to show me the answer. <laughs> this is terrible. I feel a set-up. This. this is a setup. It's definitely four minutes. Yeah, definitely. This, this I'm not going to let this drop now. We're going to search boiled eggs after this. It's going to be four <laughs> minutes for a proper soft boiled egg. If you can, make a, can make a change from what's on Louis' search engine. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look on. You're looking through all that stuff and then boiled eggs. Okay. Okay. Back to that stuff. I'm still trying Buka- to find Bukashi, Bukazi, 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 boiled, boiled eggs. Bukashi, Bukashi. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to contest that one. I'll look into that one. Right. Then. Well. Your next question, what is the hottest chilli in the world? Oh, oh my God. Carolina Reaper. Funny. Okay, I'll take that, Joe, uh, and I'll bank that one. Louis, any advances? Scotch bonnet. Scotch bonnet, good shout. Head popper. Head popper. No, that's head Keith. Pop. He's the head popper. That's what I said, Scotch bonnet. Scotch bonnet? Right. Yeah. Any ad- advance on Scotch I, bonnet, Dev? I'm going to go with the one, same as Bath Cellar. And go for the Carolina. That's, that's sticking now, <laughs> Bath Cellar. <laughs> it, was, it was a typo, but it was quite yeah, funny. It's one. Quite funny yeah. It's um, yeah, it's Scoville scale, is it? The chili scale. Is that what they call it? I think, yeah, the reaper. Yeah. Right. You've got a chili scale if you eat one roll. Yeah. <laughs> so. 
Right, well, correct. It is a Carolina Reaper. Carolina. Have you ever had one, by the way? I've read of it, never read mine, that one. So. Oh. Right, well. Not times. We're tied. We've got a tie. We're, we're tied for second place. So Keith and Dave have both got five and a half points. And Batch and Louie are tied for first place with seven and a half points. So to win the coveted annual prize and kudos for, for the year of the end of the show show quiz. Is what do we get? Well, a sweet uh yeah, you get you get your BFH. That's safe. Yeah. What's fair on? Can you have that boat? Can you have that boat outside your ass? Is it still there? No, it's gone. It's at the school now. Oh, oh sorry. You can have that. You can you can have the rust patch where it's been. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So um tiebreaker question for Batch and Louie. According to my sources. According to my sources. How many goals were scored in the 2022 World Cup in Qatar? Oh, that's a great question. 128. 128? I'd go more than that. I'll go more than that because there was a lot of goals. I'll go, do you know what I'll go? I'll go for a round number. 150. 150. There was a lot of goals early on. You're right. There was a lot of goals. In fact, there was one hundred and seventy-two goals. Oh. So Louis takes it with closest with one hundred and fifty goals. So Thank Louis you. is Louis. the annual Dockhouse Rugby Show Quiz End of the Year Show Show Champion. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I've got a trophy somewhere. <laughs> well done, Louis. It's in your sack. It's in your sack. It's in your sack. That's a different trophy, <laughs> but you can have that as well. It's a month subscription to Bokashi. Bokashi. <laughs> right, so uh, that's my quiz, anyway. Well done, Santa. Thank you thanks. for the quiz. Thanks, thanks, thanks. You're wrong on the boiled eggs, but thank you for the quiz. I'm wrong <laughs> on the boiled eggs. Where, where did you well, go? Where, where did you Google? Show me an evidence, Dave. Where did the Google Sh- it? Show it's got a website. It's World Wide Web. You find well, it on many devices. I've never been, never been called well with WWW. Well, right. WWW. The one Wibbly Wobbly Web. The Wibbly Wobbly Web. The Wibbly Wobbly Web. Look at the World Wide Web. Look at the World Wide Web. Yeah, that's the one. Look at the World Wide Web. Yeah, that's the one. 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 Yeah, that's just throwing this out there. What do we think of this name change thing for Super League? Do you think that it'll happen? Do you think there's going to be one? Oh, it'll happen. It's a little bit shite, but it'll happen. What, what do you think they'll change it to? What would you what do you, what would you like to see it called, Keith? Rugby League. <laughs> An unusual name, I know. But, I mean, this Super League, but what they're saying is that the, the, the Super League is recognised in, in other parts of the Great Britain as li- ladies netball. There's more people know Super League in London is netball than what Super League Rugby League is. Oh, yeah, because it's women's netball, isn't it? Well, yeah, well, yeah. 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 That's why, though. Yeah. Have you watched Have you watched Olympic women's netball? No. I like volleyball. That's a nice <laughs> thing. It is. The Brazilian beach volleyball is very good, I've heard. <laughs> It was on my Buzz Cashy channel. The, the girls are nice as well. <laughs> the European Rugby League, the ERL. The be ERL. Called. Do you think they're going to go something like UFC style, three letters, ERL? ERL. European Rugby League. Any advances, Joe? Any thoughts? No, they should have copyrighted Super League when they first did it. But Error. Did. Yeah, and now everyone's called it. Well, Maurice Lindsay was involved then, wasn't he? So... But everybody's now trying to think up names and get the copyrights to them. I bet there's somebody now already bought and owned European Rugby League just because they go, yeah. oh, I love that. Bought. Well, not just Rugby League. But then, uh, yeah, I suppose. Oh, yeah, they are a fellow. Yeah. I know, Super League. Rugby League Premiership. 
I mean, there's the, the name rugby. Sounds, football, sounds a bit rugby union, though, doesn't it? Rugby league premiership. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 word, on the, the word on the street is that it, it could be going to BT Sports, don't they? Right. That's what I heard. That Sky aren't offering enough money, and BT Sports lost have lost that much money in rugby union that they're looking for another product, and it will be a new product. So well, well, I mean, I mean, did, did, forget so, what Super League is now. This is what it is. This is what we've got with this. You know, the A teams and B B registered teams or whatever they are. There's going to be four teams, isn't there? The Saints, Saints, Warrington, Wigan, and Leeds will be the top four. Top like four the category, A category, A. category A. Then the rest are going to be B, aren't they? And there'll be so many Championship teams will be B, and, and it'll depend on on what you. There's that many different levels that you've got to have to get a, a, a category, a lot of the teams could well drop out. And they're going to have London in, aren't they? But the, you know, London, I think London will be one of the teams that are in, and one team will get the arse. We can't see, I can't see London getting in, like, just because... I, I think they will, though. I think they've, they will. No, they've, got, they've gone to part-time there, and... Yeah, but they came out today, didn't they? The IMG gone this week and said that London is the yeah. most marketable team that there's possibly in rugby league. Oh really? Oh, there you go. Yeah. Oh, well, I, 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 yeah. I mean, let's I mean, let's look at the let's look at the American football. If they in, in that NFC and the NFL, what there's two two divisions, isn't there? Yeah. They, um, and if they move teams, if they're in a place that I think Los Angeles Rams, they they've moved three times. They've just moved them to other cities. Yeah, whether well, they were the, the LA Raiders, Oklahoma Raiders moved to LA, uh, moved to Las Vegas. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Well, so just Lewis, move them about. Lewis, yeah, I mean, Huddersfield yeah. are going to struggle, aren't they? They're, out there wobbling with the ground because the ground's directly falling to bits, and the and and the crowds they just don't get crowds, do they? And that's that's one big thing that this ING or what the other call them are going on is that the, the amount of crowds and how many t- how many times you're on TV as well because it's the advertising, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. I mean, there's that much involved. It's beyond beyond my head at the end of the day. But what I've read about it, what I've heard about it, that there's that there's going to be, uh, I've heard there's going to be one Super League team that when it comes about in 2020, next year is just a trial run, isn't it? They're going to try yeah. different things. And then is it 2024 that it will come into, it will start what's going to happen in 2024. Then 2025, that'll be the, that'll be the big, the big day, you mean? Well, that's what the word in the street is. Ho, ho, ho. Um, <laughs> before we go, yeah. what would you like for Christmas, Keith? Apart from an amateur system that works. Uh, um, <coughs> Rovers to finish in the top eight. Rovers to finish in the top eight. <laughs> Do we think that's going to happen? I like that. I like that. That's good. good Very shit. ambitious. Ambish, ambitious, fruit, says David. Ambitious. What do you, what do you think, Louis? Top eight for, for okay. Yes, because I don't want to make Keith angry. So. I hope it's competitive and uh, I'm not sure what I want for Christmas as such. It's, I guess, more difficult the older you get, doesn't it? Trying to pick something. That says, what about Santa? Oh, I hope uh, Joel's a new dad. That's what I hope for yeah, Christmas. Yeah, like, it'll be, yeah. Do we, do we know what we're having? I know you're not going to say on here, but you don't... Is it a surprise? No, no, surprise. Or... Oh, no, brilliant. Ace. Nice. That's cool. Good. That's exciting. Old school, yeah. Yeah, and then you, you've got Obviously, you've got a built-in babysitter with him because he's always in looking after kids. <laughs> um, he wouldn't notice an extra one, would he? Just no, I'm just slipping in there. How's the house coming on, Louis? How's the renovation? Yeah, yeah stalling, stalling, stalling. Yeah, sad work and expensive. Oh, like a cheap I, mean, so I can see what's going on now. He's cut that fence down. I couldn't see before, but now they've cut it down. I can look right in and see what's happening. I was watching you all have your tea the other night. <laughs> they don't want you, they, they don't now, want you get a bath. Can, 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 you, can you answer me a question before we're on? When was the last time that St. Ellen's didn't finish in the top four? Do you, do you know the answer to this, Keith? No, no. Oh. no. I mean, even when I was a kid, when I was an old supporter when I was growing up, St. Ellen's was a, always a fantastic team then. Like when Van Vollenhoven played and Abe Terry and all them, Karelius and all them sort of blokes, you know. I was going to say, throughout my lifetime, I don't think they've ever... Two fans and not top four, two fans, two in... We didn't finish top four, we finished fifth. Two, it was when I was here, so two fans and... Was it 16? Might have been, yeah, something like, yeah, 16, 16 or... I was going to say 16 or 15. 
because Justin came halfway through 17, didn't he? Yeah. Was it a year before that? I mean, there was... When Kieran was coach, then. I mean, 2015, yeah. I think we just, yeah. So there's not been many times, have there? No. Oh. no. Well, it was so uh, great when we were kids, when we were growing up in the mid 80s. They weren't too great then. They had some great individual players, and they, occasionally they'd, uh, they'd do well, but they had some really tough times as well. And crowds were low at, at Nosey Road. I remember them being booed off the pitch several times in that era. Mid eighties, um, just before they turned it round in the later eighties, they started getting a bit better. Then they went Wembley eighty nine, ninety one. You know when it used Back to play the old, the old nose in the road. Eighty seven as well, yeah. Mark Elia. Mark Elia. And I played there in the top sixteen playoff. And St Helens always used to go out first, right? Because you used to run out the tunnel and you kind of you ran up, didn't you, to, yep. to go onto the pitch. And and you, you, you and it was it was caged, wasn't it? If I remember right. No, it wasn't no, caged. It was it was like like concrete wall and a yeah, concrete right. roof. No, it was witness. Tunnel, it was witness. Couch, witness. Anyway, you used to run out, and there's these thirteen giants stood waiting for you, and the the crowd were being for your blood, and you thought, "What the bloody hell am I doing it?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it was. Yeah, uh, uh, me and John Mantle and all them stood waiting for you, like like. Belongs to the slaughter sort of thing. Quite it? gladiatorial when you think when you think of it like that, isn't it? Coming out down a long dark tunnel onto yeah, the pitch, yeah. and then up, up because, every, yeah, the, and they've just been sharing for St. Helens, and then only getting a load of bones as young come running out. Yeah. <laughs> what was the best ground you played at, Keith? I liked Edinburgh. I liked it. I liked playing at Edinburgh. Yeah. The worst ground was the Bramley. I mean, Bramley. we kept in the reserves at Bramley. Barley Moor. If, if there's a pub called the Barley Moor. Mm. The, the the ground was behind it. It got changed into in an old cow shepherd or something, whatever it was. And then the, the field next door was McLaren Field where Bramley finished up. And Bramley tried to buy that piece of land for years off of Mrs. McLaren. And they would never sell it. would never sell it. And and the dad, the, the, mother, the, the old people died and left them it in the will, as long as they called the ground McLaren Field. Right. No, no, your history is amazing, isn't it? When you think about it, things that happened in rugby league, yeah, yeah, that was a terrible ground to play at. But um, I played at Wigan when there was a good side. I played at St Helens when there was a good side. Yeah. But Edinley, I like playing there. Yeah, it's, I don't know, Leeds was always one of them teams that let you play rugby. You know what I mean? Who, <laughs> who, who was best coach? Well, that I played under. Hmm? Well, Mick Clark, I would say, when he came from Leeds to Keighley. And then when I went to Australia, I actually was coached. Yeah, you was playing coach. Never, I'd, I'm not going to put, ridicule people or rubbish them, but the coach I played under at, at uh, Maitland, Terry Panowitz, he was a, he was an Australian player for, play for the uh, Kangaroo. He, 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 he played those forward, but he wasn't really big enough, but he had out as big as a lion. And, and, and it was an hard comp with Newcastle. Johnny Raper was playing there then, Father John Coates, uh, Dennis Ward, as I say, he played there. Mm. Was some he good he, he there. was an actual serving priest, wasn't he, Father John Coates? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, we played him in the <laughs> We played him in the Grand Family in 73. He used to do an, do an advert on the telly. It was at SW Miller's, it was an electrical store. And he used to say, if I didn't believe in this product, I wouldn't do this advertisement. That was his, his final word on this subway. <laughs> we, we, played, we played him in the 73 grand final and I hit him with his stiff arm. And as I rolled him on the floor, I said, hey, John, I won't do this. I didn't fucking mean it. And I, it, 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 in them days, it, it was stiff arm flying about all over. Anyway, it was, it, it, it knocked him out and he played all the first half, semi conscious, right? This is what I found out after. And he kind of came round in the dressing room at half time and scored two tries. A fantastic player. But we got into him and, and a young kid who was playing centre for us, Robert Finch, St George had come to the grand final to watch him play because he'd come on the under first Australian schoolboys touring team in 72. And he was a good player, Finch. Anyway, he, he played opposite Father John. And I think he scored two tries with Finch. He had a great game. And St. George signed him from that game. And he, he spent 10 years at St. George, he's Wow. He was um, he's, he's a good player, Finchie. He was a bit like Eric Ashton. And he went, when he watched Eric Ashton run, every step he took was a sad step. He didn't know where he was going. 
you know, big, you, remember, you remember Eric Ashby? Yeah, 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 yeah. He was a fantastic centre. When he ran, he big long range, and, and he, you'd be going like that. Which way is it going to go? And, uh, and Finchie ran like that. And it was another thing, he could pass the ball, he could be running that way, right? And he could pass the ball to his left as easy as he could to the right. Which is an hard thing to do, is run that way and pass the ball that way. Yeah. That's why, um, that's why your left wingers always tend to score more tries than your right winger. Because everybody, nine times out of ten people are right handed, so they pass the ball easier that way than that way. I'm, I'm left, I'm left handed, I'm a kitty Paul. Pass that way. Yeah, but it's true, you watch players play. 99 times out of 100, the, the, the left hand side, the play to the left hand side. Yeah. So the right hand side defence uh, 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 get more around them, and, and that's what that's what Rovers' defence last year was bad. And that's why they brought this kid in from Parramatta, because he's a right hand centre. Right. And he's good in defence. Oh, there we go. Inside it all. Inside information, though, guys. Yeah. You can, uh, yeah. So. Who was the who was your best coach you played under Louis? Uh probably the one that made me made me want to be like probably put me on the right way was probably Brian Max, who made me want to be a rugby league player, if you know what I mean. Like yep. was flittering in and out. I didn't know if I wanted to do it. But he sat me down and said, Do you want to do it? And then I took on really. So that was at London. And then obviously up here, probably I'd, I'd say Justin, just he changed he changed the ethos of the team, if you know what I mean. So we all come under one umbrella and we all pull in the right direction. And it weren't about egos or anything like that. It was just about doing your job. So, even probably. Right. Brilliant. So, what was it that Brian Matt did that was different to other coaches that got you interested, Louis? Uh, no, he well, weren't interested. He just like, he was probably like the only coach that, that sat me down and just like went gun like, gun o on me, really. And went, like, listen, three, you can make it if you want to, but you ain't going to do it because you're fat. You fucking this, you that. So he blew my legs off, really. So, it's and then I went, right, yeah. And I, 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 I'd rather have someone blow my legs off than I know what I've got to do. If you know what I mean, to, so to achieve. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you said, no, I want, I want this, I want this. I'm not that. I'll do nah, it. Well, well, yeah. well, I can't, I can't wait for it going. Well, I'll fucking show you. So, yeah. Right, so. And have you ever rung him up and gone, look how many rings I've got? Oh no, <laughs> no, because he's got more fucker, isn't he? <laughs> Can't do that yet. Can't do that yet. <laughs> what about you, Joe? 40, 40, 40. I love 40. Yeah. Love 40. 40 lads. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if it weren't for 40 at York, I mean, there's no chance I'd be I'd be playing Super League now. So what he taught me, what what I learned off him and just how how he thinks about a game of rugby really really brought me on. And then obviously Wolfie for the last three years, he's been he's been brilliant as well. So uh, yeah, them too, but yeah, 40 for me. So Potter was the main inspirational guy. Yeah, he just taught me stuff that probably I would never even have thought of effects like results in a game. Do you know what I mean? And things like that. Um, so, yeah, if I had been for him and the team at York, then I would have been playing Super League, definitely. Yeah. And what did Christian bring then to Saints? Because obviously it was a, you were a successful team when, when, when Christian arrived. Um you know, so I suppose for him as a heart, I mean, we spoke to him, we, 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 we interviewed Christian, so I do know his answer on that, but, you know, what was, what's your opinion of, of of that? I just think the way he managed the group, he sort of, early, early on, he probably, he, he, I don't think he quite understood fully what, what he had within the group. Like Luke said, uh, Justin brought the group in such a good position and the players that we've got are, are leaders within the group. You probably you didn't you didn't need to give us too much. You just had to manage a few things and give us a few guidelines. But then there's smart enough players and the good enough players in our team that we we can sort of be left not left alone because we've obviously got to have some sort of idea what we're all going to do together. But we, we we can be left to solve things on our own. We can be left to work out how to beat teams. And once, and once you start beating teams once, you usually stick to that. And until it don't work. And until you beat him, then there's there's not much to change from the last time you've played him. So he, he probably stuck with stuck with what he knew and what we'd done in the previous years and just managed the group really well and made sure everyone felt involved and brought the young lads through when they needed to play and sort of 
give them enough that they were happy when they weren't playing as well and made sure everyone was fighting in the same direction. So, yeah, that's what he brought to sense, I think. They were allowed to play what's in front of your back. Yeah, definitely. Um, especially with Johnny Lomax inside me. Like, we'd be, we'd be full not to let him do what he sees. Yeah. So, we, 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 we've got a pretty free licence. I'm sure Will will be dissimilar. Like this, there's got to be this time and a place for structure and uh, systems and stuff like that. But we, we we're pretty we're pretty flexible. Yeah, nice to hear. I think I think what as well what Wolfie brought as well just the the, the stillness to us. I think like the like, you know like the, the the steeliness like we could just get through games like not not panic that we if we have gone behind we were going to lose. We knew we we knew we could come back and win. If you know what I mean, I, the, and I I felt the last three years I've never seen a defense do what we do. If you know what I mean, and for for that long, them teams under that much pressure that they just break, and then you've just you know you've won. Yeah, the, the it was like the steeliness of that that he did in steel on us, and I think that's that's what he brought to us. I think Justin gave us the flair and the confidence to go out and do what we wanted to do. Enhance like Johnny's Johnny's power, enhance Cootie's power when when he had them, and then I think when Wolfie come in, he, he made us more strong, stronger, like together yeah. with with our defense, and and I knew it after like like he said he didn't get off to a good start, but then he realised he could trust us because of COVID came in, and he realised he could trust us, and that's when he went, all right, fuck, I better listen to these boys, they they know what they're talking about, mm. especially like with Batch, like Johnny, you just you just you don't speak to Johnny. You just let Johnny go and do what he wants to do. Same with Wellsby. You don't flood, try and flood their brains. You just let them go and play. Mm. Just follow them. I, th- I think that Johnny Lomax, is, I think he's one of the best I've seen, I think. Yeah. For a, you know, as a, as, a, as a footballer, you know, as a, like a, 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 a leader, a creator, I'll call it what you like. Yeah. He just seems to know where to be at the right time. And he's always got somebody with him. That's what I, I like about Bats. He, he runs for a gap. He, he follows blokes about, and a lot of second rows don't even do that. Mm. You know, a lot of forwards now just they just program. They just you know just run at him, run at him. You know I mean? But um, a good to me, a good coach should know the strengths of what each individual player's got and use that use that and weld it into a team rather than just have a structure or a game plan. Yeah. I mean, to me, a game plan. What it's game plan's got to then beat them. You know, that's your plan, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, well, Johnny's like uh, a, anyway. These like coaches, a... when they say to these coaches, um, "How many games do you think you'll win this year?" And then some of these coaches say, "Well, I've 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 I've, I've picked out the games I think we could win." I'd sack him. He'd be on the he'd be on his bike if a coach was to say to me, "I think we can only win these games." He shouldn't be there. Mm-hmm. He should expect to win every game. Every coach to say, "Well, I'm going to finish top of the league this year." Whether you think you can or you can't, what you should do. Hmm. I brought a thing in when I was in Aussie. They called it the will to win. And it was bra- it was based on uh, the Green Bay Packers. Vince Lombardi, who coached the Green Bay Packers, and they won about 10 premierships or whatever it was. And, the, and, and they brought this film out. They called it the will to win. And he was in it. And it was and it, this was all the beginning of this new psychology, you know, the will to win. If you think you're going to lose, well, you will lose. You've got to think you're going to win every game. Now look at the guy next to you. Look into his eyes. Now I think you're gonna see a guy who will go that inch with you. Hell yeah. You're gonna see a guy who will sacrifice himself for this team because he knows when it comes down to it, you're gonna do the same for him. That's a team, gentlemen. And either we heal now as a team. Or we will die as individuals. That's football, guys. The the rugby league league is about a game of inches. There's quite a lot of psychology in sport now. You know, in the last 20 years, it's really come in. Probably feels, uh, I guess it's quite normal to you guys who are playing now that psychology is just built into what you do in everyday training. But I remember it coming in, like you mentioned, Keith, as a almost as a philosophy, as a new thing, and it did change things for the better, I think. But back to, um, you know, Johnny Lomax, what I notice about him, or what I, I see is 
his game management, you tell me if I'm wrong, really, but when you're watching, his game management looks impeccable. Yeah. How he can read the game, it's as if he knows what's going to happen. He knows where he needs yeah. to be on the pitch, what should be happening at each point in time. And I think some of that, he's got better at that with age, as, as no doubt anyone does. If you do something for long enough, you read it better, you understand it better. But mm. it seems just absolutely brilliant like that as a as a teammate. Hopefully you, hopefully you agree with me. I do know. I think I've because I've seen all the sides of Johnny. If you know what I mean, I've seen him when he was young. I've seen him like now, really. So like, he's a, he's a true scholar of the game. He studies. I can't tell you what he studies. He studies so much of about rugby league and about how to make his body better, how to make himself quicker, what to eat, what to this. He's he's a, he's a, he's a scholar of the game. So he, like he said, he does see things before it does happen because he uh, he's very um. He's very particular of what he wants to do when he when he wants to do it, when he's got the numbers, and then he'll just go and do it. If you know what I mean. So he's he's a he's a he's a phenomenal talent, and he's a he's a phenomenal bloke. He's an absolute fucking nine ball, but he's a, he's a great fella. And even better because he had some serious knee injuries when he was younger, and, and his yeah. last one I thought there's no chance he's coming back from that. No one's no. coming back from that injury. And here we are, years later. And he's had, must have had it easy a couple of other games since then. It's yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. I see him go through it all like the first one, the second one, and then the third one, and then for him to come back, at, uh, uh, I think it was Leeds, and he scored when he come back as well. So, the, and obviously, like, the, well, I've known Johnny for years. I know his family and all that, and just the relief that he had, like, and the career that he's gone on to to have after that, after Amazing. thinking he was going to be a physio. He's now nah, he's 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 he's, 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 uh, he's amazing really. That's fantastic. So I, I would imagine he'll stay in the game then after he retires. I, I believe, happen. yeah, I believe. Uh, well, I think he would. I think uh, the game would miss miss out on him if they didn't get him in in some sort of yeah, coaching role or something like that. Yeah. 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 What about yourself? Though? Are you going to stay in the game when you retire? Or are you going to? No, do no, no. no. No one listens to me now. No one listens to me now. So I don't matter. <laughs> The, the next coach is in telling the town. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Batch will, will be manager. Four, four, fucking two. That's what he's going to be. <laughs> You're not playing the Christmas pudding formation, no. <laughs> no, no. Christmas tree. No, no. I won't do that one. No. Yeah. So, you, you, well, you, what about Millwall Rugby Club? You could start that up, maybe. No, no, no. I'm probably up here for the long run. I think going back down south. Can't, I can't bring me. My three boys down south, Jesus Christ, they wouldn't know what, what I'd hit them down there. Proper northerners, Ali. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some so kids, they're going down there. And, and, Are you coming back to Yorkshire? Batch? I think probably in the end, it's only about an hour away from here, so get away from Louis a bit further as well, so that probably adds to it. But yeah. Your little one's going to be a Sintel in your little batch. And, yeah, well, they'll probably dictate. I, 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 if you'd have asked Louis when he first started, he said he'd gone back down south, but the kids had kept yeah. him. Yeah, once they're in schools and they're happy, you feel good yeah. moving them. And you, have, and you have Father Christmas as a mate, so it's, it's really hard, isn't it, to move but back? That's it. Yeah, you're close. <laughs> you just found the corner for yeah. Father Christmas, you're going to get your toys. So. Any New Year's resolutions? No. Good. <laughs> I just, you know what I want to say? Keith, it was a pleasure speaking to you, mate. You're a fucking legend of a bloke. Okay. Not, yeah. you, Santa. Not you, Santa. Not you, no. Santa. Not you, Santa. I'm kid. Santa tonight. This is Keith. To, yeah. Every time he comes on, I have to change my name. <laughs> it gets too confusing. <laughs> well, he is, he's, Keith is old school rugby league, what I was brought up on. Yeah. To, to me, he's a diamond. He's an absolute diamond, he is. But no, no, honestly, you, you, Keith, you are you, you're you're a gentleman and a a legend of the sport, and, it, and it's great that we've got you, thank you very with much. us and on. Uh, Louis, thank you for your time, mate. Yeah, thank you very much. Good Cheers, luck next season. Right, yeah. uh, just before we do go, actually, um, Joe, what was it like getting called up for England? You had, yeah, you no, had your br- game. Brilliant World Cup home soil, being part of World Cup squad after being at York only four years ago, just. Only something I could have dreamed of. So yeah, I I thoroughly enjoyed it. Even even if I didn't play quite as much as I'd have hoped, but I, I and the, I wish with the result had been slightly different. But I thoroughly enjoyed it and got a great experience out of it as well. So yeah, I'd, I'd like to oh, do it again. Give me, oh, give me, uh, give me some motivation to 
make sure I'm back in that squad again at some point. Yeah, yeah. And so then comes the rules of the old kid. <laughs> <laughs> they'll get him down here. Yeah, That's what they'll do. Pull him over this way. Porch him. Can't have two batches here. Fuck me, Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, keep keep it. <laughs> Keep your kid head in the right yeah. He'll come and find you. He'll be like, hey, when he, when he comes to Crimson Park, look for us. I'll stand in the well near where you come out. <laughs> he'll, be the one, he'll be the one that's whacked you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> trip you up as you run out. Yeah. If a pram, <laughs> if a pram comes throwing at you, the only thing is, though, if it's off Keith, it could be a silver cross, one of the yeah. big ones. <laughs> Well, listen, gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Um, that's it for the end of the year show show on the Doc Elf Rugby Show. Thanks to all our guests this year who we've had on and everybody who's come along. Thanks to our guests tonight for taking part and putting up with me and Dave um, and to Keith for all his tales. Louis, continue being a legend. Bats, thank you. Crack on. Have a great season and enjoy fatherhood. Big love to you and the missus. Um, Merry Christmas, yeah. everybody. Don't forget, after tonight's show, leave your views in our comments section. We'd love to hear from you. The Doc House Rugby Show is proud to support the Teardrops Homeless Charity. Teardrops, supporting your community. If you would like to support the Teardrops Charity, you can text your donation by texting the word Teardrops5 to 70031 to donate £5. Teardrops10 to 70039 to donate £10 and Teardrops 20 to 70039 to donate £20. Teardrops, supporting your community.